Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a science fiction action film, Tremors Part 5, Bloodlines. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film opens with a self-proclaimed survivalist named Bert, starring in his survivalist web series. Burke has dedicated his life to killing subterranean man-eating predators, called graboids. These predators are gigantic worms or grubs about 9 meters long and prey seismically or through vibrations. They have three snake-type GPS tentacles to ensnare their prey, pulling them into their mouth. Graboids produce shorter monsters. One type is called shriekers, who detect their prey through infrared sensors. Another kind is the ass blasters, a winged creature that launches itself into the air by igniting an explosive mixture of liquids and blasts it through their smelly butts. These ass blasters hatch eggs that become new baby graboids. In South Africa, a man named Bassin and the field agent hear something shaking underground. Bassin accidentally slips on the rocks, causing him to fall into a cave pit. The field agent throws Bassin the rope and starts pulling him up. Bassin is almost out of the pit when suddenly a graboid emerges from the dark and grabs him. The attack causes the field agent to be pulled too, but fortunately, the struggle stops. The field agent repeatedly calls out to Bassin, but all he can hear are his screams, before the mysterious predator takes Bassin's chopped off arm. The scene then changes to the Mojave Desert in southern Nevada, where a man named Travis drives his motorcycle like a real stunt rider to reach Bert. Upon Travis's sudden arrival in the wildlife, Bert's cameraman leaves him and gives the job to Travis. Travis claims that he's a big fan of Bert, and now that he's gonna work with him, he promises that he will put Bert back into the hunting game. This is because Bert was fiercely hunting predators before, and now he's just cooking boring rattlesnakes. While packing their stuff, Travis shares that he's from Florida, a place Bert will never forget. Their conversation gets interrupted when a South African Wildlife Ministry agent named Eric arrives at the scene. Eric informs him about a confirmed sighting of an ass blaster in South Africa. Bert agrees to come, when suddenly, Travis meddles with his business. Bert doesn't want Travis to come along with him, but Travis argues that it's an opportunity to film him hunting and killing predators again in Africa. Travis also adds that he's prepared, pulling out his new hunting gizmo, which he promises to give to Bert if he agrees to let him come. Bert agrees right away, so Travis makes a deal with Eric. He will fund Bert's videos for the next three years, in exchange for their help to hunt the ass blaster in South Africa. Flying to the location, Bert befriends their pilot, Seconds before arriving at the location, Eric informs Bert that South Africa has strict customs regarding weaponry, all of which must go through the three-day weapon quarantine. Before getting out of the helicopter, Pilot tells Bert that when the sun rises in Africa, he better be running. Pilot then gives Bert a horn containing his name and contact number. As Pilot leaves, Bert tells everyone that the area is clean from graboids. He has a seismic vibration monitor uplinked to the National Seismologic Network that can detect graboids' movement within a 50-mile square area. Eric then introduces the local field agent and a safari guide in the area. Eric's assistant is also introduced. Bert informs everyone that graboids and ass blasters are immune to any known tranquilizers, rendering ordinary weapons useless. On the other hand, two paleontologists at the Lake Dig site cheer in delight as they find a graboid's fossilized remains. The hunters arrive at an animal refuge, where they meet Barody, one of the animal's caretakers, a little girl whom Travis befriends, and the girl's mother, Dr. Nandy, a veterinarian. As Bert's heavy weaponry is impounded due to South African gun laws, Eric provides him with a small collection of guns that are almost useless. Travis immediately flirts with Nandy, but Bert interrupts them as he wants to start the hunting right away. However, Eric insists they take a rest and start it first thing in the morning. On the other hand, paleontologists celebrate their discovery with glasses of wine under the shower they have made with fabrics and some lodges while listening to radio music. However, the music's vibration attracts a graboid's attention, and before they know it, the predator emerges from underground and attacks them. Back to the hunters, the field agent is telling them about the location where Bassin was grabbed and killed by presumably an ass blaster when they hear a noise in the clouds. It is when rain falls even though it's sunny, and the village experiences this every day at 3 in the afternoon. Suddenly, Barberty comes running and informs them of another attack. They arrive at the dig site where Bert sees the fossil and realizes it's a different breed of graboid. Later that night, Travis joins Nandy in attending a local tribal dance of the natives. Meanwhile, Barberty expresses his dislike of the monster hunters to Eric's assistant, especially Travis, whom he considers his rival to Nandy. As they repair a car, an ass blaster suddenly attacks them. Eric's assistant manages to instill a wound on the predator with his bolo before Bert arrives. 
Bert shoots it while it's in a vehicle, but the bullets are not enough to kill it. The ass blaster flies away before returning and taking Eric's assistant away. Bert says that the engine must have attracted the Predator, but Barty claims it is cold. The field agent helps Bert find Eric's assistant, lying on the bridge, unmoved. Bert tells the field agent to turn off the engine, which he does. Bert wears a heat blocking gear to hide his heat signature before going out to save Eric's assistant. Bert approaches Eric's assistant, who's in bad condition. When he gets near, the ass blaster comes out and flies away again with Eric's assistant. Bert attempts to kill the Predator with his bullets, but he is unsuccessful. The ass blaster then lands on the car, panicking the field agent, who calls out for Bert's help. As he's out of ammunition, Bert takes Eric's assistant's bolo and tosses it to the ass blaster, successfully hitting the Predator. The ass blaster takes off wounded and Bert runs to the car. As they return to the ammo refuge, Bert snaps at Travis and Nandy for attending the local tribal dance instead of preparing to hunt those predators. Bert instructs Nandy to evacuate everyone as soon as possible while he tells the others to load every gun they have. Bert harshly tells Travis to back off and help with the evacuation to be useful. Nandy then shows up with a beautiful rifle which she gives to Bert, who takes off with Eric and the field agent. They also bring a big-ass cage to put the ass blaster after capturing it. They arrive at the cave pit where Bassin was killed and where it turns out to be an ass blaster colony. Bert sees an ass blaster not far from them, so he instructs Eric and the field agent to stand behind him so the predator cannot read their heat signature. Bert throws a thermal flame to attract the predator, while the field agent shoots it with a dart. They successfully catch its attention, but despite Bert's instructions to stay with him, Eric and the field agent run to the vehicle. This causes the ass blaster to fly towards the field agent instead of Bert, who repeatedly shoots it with his rifle. The Predator takes off, but Bert remains focused on it. After a few seconds of observing it fly, Bert bursts the Predator into flame with his rifle, killing the field agent accidentally in the process when its remains fall onto him. Meanwhile, tension ensues between Travis and Barity when they both decide to stay at the refuge. On the other hand, Bert discovers that the ass blasters have been laying eggs, soon to be graboids. This prompts Eric to reveal himself as a poacher, planning to sell the eggs that cost a large amount of money on the black market. Travis locks Bert in a cage and leaves with the eggs. As the heat of South Africa hits Bert the next day, Bert showers with his pee, uses it as an insect repellent, and even gargles some of it before drinking. Hours later, a lion appears and pees on him with its hormones. Suddenly, Bert panics after hearing his seismic vibration monitor going off, meaning there's a graboid nearby. The lion takes off while Bert talks to himself, describing how he will kill the graboid. Fortunately, it's Travis with a truck that he connects to the cage with chains. Bert informs him that a graboid is coming, so Travis immediately returns to the truck and drives it along the bumpy road. However, a huge rock breaks their truck down, stopping them from leaving. Travis frees Bert, who thinks he might be delusional and tells Travis about Eric's betrayal. However, Travis is not so shocked anymore, as he has done a digital investigation of Eric. It turns out, the South African Wildlife Ministry doesn't even exist. Bert adds that Eric is on the run with an ass blaster egg that would lead to unfathomable consequences if sold to the black market. Left with no choice, Bert and Travis head back to the refuge on foot. On the other hand, Nandy grabbed her bow and arrows after hearing an ass blaster flying by the refuge. Barty takes the little girl to her room as instructed by Nandy. She finds the refuge's engines and electric poles destroyed by the ass blaster. The predator stomps on the roof at this time, causing Barty to fire while the girl hides. Barty and the girl run outside, only to be stopped by the ass blaster, leaving them with no choice but to hide in the kitchen. The predator still follows them inside, so they hide behind a steel table to hide their heat signatures. Barty fires at the ass blaster that continues to attack them. Just as he runs out of ammo, two arrows pierce through the table as Nandy has come and killed the Predator. Meanwhile, Bert and Travis find Eric's truck crashed in the desert, which alarms them. They also find Eric's footprints, indicating that he's alive. Suddenly, a wounded Eric appears, repeatedly screaming while running with a suitcase containing the ass blaster egg. A Predator grabs the suitcase, leaving Eric devastated. With no choice, he runs onto the rocks as they cannot reach him there. Bert instructs him to stay on the rocks when the Graboid's GPS tentacles detach from its host. Bert shoots one of the tentacles that attack Eric, causing Eric to fall to the ground. The ground shakes as a massive Graboid with its detachable tentacles emerges, eating Eric. Bert theorizes that the African life must have mutated the Graboids, hence its detachable tentacles and even the ass blasters that ignore the heat signatures. So they must get into the cave and destroy all the eggs to end the Graboid's life cycle. Travis volunteers to go into the cave with a grenade, which Bert reluctantly agrees to in exchange for his phone. 
Travis bravely enters the cave with a thermal flare, while Bert contacts Pilot for transport and more weaponry. Travis finds numerous Ass Blaster's eggs when he encounters an Ass Blaster. Travis pulls the grenade pin just in time as he runs out of the cave and kills the Predator. Shortly after, Pilot arrives with his helicopter. As soon as they land, his co-pilot gets attacked and killed by the Graboid tentacles. After that, the Graboid emerges from the ground and eats Pilot. This devastates Bert as they are out of ammunition to blow the cave. However, Travis points out the helicopter's missiles, giving Bert hope again. They take the risk and run to the aircraft, distracting the Graboid through the vibration of the animals running. Bert launches the missiles, destroying the nest when a goo-covered pilot appears. It turns out, Pilot tickled the Predator's stomach with his bullet, causing it to spit him out. The seismic monitor beeps again, meaning another Graboid is near. So Pilot flies the air vehicle away. On the other hand, the group encounter another Ass Blaster, which they quickly kill with shotgun bullets. They prepare to leave for the village when a Graboid attacks. Fortunately, the Predator cannot make it through the concrete slab. They then throw gas all over a vehicle and light it on fire before leaving a rock on the gas pedal. They then get into another car as the vibrations attract the Graboid. As it does so, Nandy runs with her fireball arrow and releases it as the Graboid emerges and eats the vehicle, creating an explosion and killing the Predator. On the other hand, Pilot flies Bert and Travis back to their truck and helps them repair the damage before leaving Bert with a rifle. As they drive back to the refuge, Travis reveals that he is Bert's son, the child of a one-night stand in Florida 40 years earlier. Bert refuses to believe his smelly bullshit. Seeing his father's reaction, Travis promises never to talk to him again after killing the predators in Africa. Suddenly, a graboid tentacle appears behind Travis, which Bert kills before driving back to the refuge. While on the way to the village, Nandy discovers why they were attacked. Her daughter has mysteriously found a graboid egg and kept it in her basket. Bert and Travis follow them to the village. Nandy and Barty stop at a local shop where they try to help a native man but fail when a graboid grabs and eats him. They return to the car, only to discover that the girl had wandered with the egg. Soon, Bert and Travis arrive, finding the village under siege by the massive graboid with detachable tentacles, which Bert named Queen Bitch Tentacles. Bert informs Nandy and Barty that they have destroyed the predator's nest, and the egg the little girl has will save the graboid bloodline. That's why Queen Bitch Tentacles will not harm her. Bert points to the motorcycle nearby, so Travis volunteers to be the bait, while Barty volunteers to take and save the little girl. Travis rides the motorcycle, distracting the Queen Bitch Tentacles with the vibration, allowing Barty to save the girl. Before that, Travis takes the egg from her and tosses it to Nandy, who suggests something to Bert. The little girl has an earthworm zapper, and they can use the daily thunderstorm as the zap to kill the worm, the Queen Bitch Tentacles. Travis distracts the Graboid as the villagers construct a trap. As the storm erupts, Nandy lures the Queen Bitch Tentacles in with the egg. With the lightning bolts attracted by the metal trap, the hunters successfully destroy the egg and the Queen Bitch Tentacles. Everyone cheers in delight, as they can now live freely without worrying about another predator attack. On the other side, Bert finally accepts Travis as his son, by inviting him to join in his work and help him build his brand. The film ends with a credit scene, showing Bert and Travis hunting and killing various monsters worldwide. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.